Right. Okay, so let's just get started. Uh, welcome to this Monday. Uh, let's see. Hope everyone's doing well. And let's get started. Let's go through the previous action items. From last week, we have Madalena to cross post Oscar's post about the Elton and Marathon and Madalena to figure out the sumo bot. Yeah, so the the blog post was cross posted. You can see it on the, the sumo blog. Um, well, the other one, so I managed to get the address from GitHub for the sumo bot. So Roland, if you want to hack on it, um, maybe for the next sumo day, that would be awesome. Because <laughs> I have no idea how to do it. Or anybody who wants to hack on it, uh, you have the address there. If you want to make the sumo bot less annoying, i.e. that it won't uh, pop immediately the moment once you log in, but let's say Minta, uh, to provide us with a link, so it's there, so go for it. Okay, that, that sounds very good. Um, yeah, I think that maybe not, not uh, Roland can definitely help you. If someone else uh, knows their way around this, um, these bots, then that's cool. So um, I think those were the two action items. So let's jump to the Sumo development update. We have now Ricky and Kadir on the call. Which one of you wants to take this? Uh, I can Thank start. You. And then. Feel free. OK, so we're, we're in the first sprint of the quarter, and it actually finishes tomorrow. But basically, we've kicked off all of our major Q3 projects that we're working on. So. Uh, we started planning open badges, and we should start implementing that in the next sprint. We started planning our search improvements for for other locales, non-English, uh, indexers and analyzers, and that's just one bug uh, that's going to happen next sprint. We started planning and playing with Persona <coughs> and finding what issues there might be and stuff, and... and uh, We'll, there's still more uh, to figure out there, UX wise and all that. But we started looking at the technical parts and uh, community tools, uh, all the requests for better data dashboards, etc. That Rosanna and Melina have. Uh, we've started those, those bugs too. So that's the high level thing. You can look at the sprint page for details. My thing. I like the persona thing. I hope that works out. I think that, that, that can help a lot. Michael, yeah? Yeah, I just wanted to um, point out if you if you use the KB dashboard a lot, especially the list of the most visited articles, Kadir made a couple of nice fixes to it. So if you click through to most articles, it now has numbers on the articles and switching products and times all works. And, and it only shows how to and troubleshooting articles and no more templates or redirects or any other like riffraff other things you don't want to see in that list in there so it's really it's just articles and numbered by popularity it's pretty cool that's nice uh yeah just as a reminder for everyone so this this quarter is different from the previous quarters in that we are actually uh, developing all of our Q3 goals at the same time. So one developer owns one project. Um, so you will see all of them uh, progressing more slowly, but at the same time. So it's not that everyone is working on the same project, but that we are working on all of them in parallel. Um, so please keep that in mind. Uh, there, there, there might be fewer updates every week, but uh, they are progressing, all of them slowly but steadily, all of them are progressing. So that's a little bit different from the previous quarters. And that, that's, uh, we have, we're trying that this quarter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, sounds, that sounds good. So everyone knows that this, this quarter is a little bit different. Um, but, but I think that, that so far it's going good, right, Kadir? Uh, yeah, we so last uh, I mean last sprint was the first uh, sprint of the quarter, and we started investigating all of our Q3 projects, which is also a bit different than uh, before, which is a great uh, uh, change, by the way. 
I think Ricky made that possible, so that's great. Thank you, Ricky, for that. It's it's a good idea to uh, research projects at the beginning of the quarter so that we don't uh, bump into any surprises later on. Um, so that was a great change. That's where we started. And now we are going to start implementing, so we will see how that goes. But I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful. Okay. Okay, that sounds very good. So uh, does any of you have any questions? Um, Okay, otherwise we will go, I see there are no uh, UX updates, so maybe we just go and jump directly to the round table. Um, I see here that Tyler and Matt attended the AOM work week, um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how it was. Hey, yeah, just real quick, so um, there was an AMO work week in Portland last week, and so Matt and I went along with the AMO team and a few other interested people. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you all are with Project Squeaky, but it's our initiative to help clean Firefox from bad add-ons that take over um, our user settings and don't respect user sovereignty. Uh, uh, so we discussed that, that a lot at the AMO work week and came out with some good future plans, discussions of rounds that'll help um, give power back to the users uh, in cases where an add-on takes over all of Firefox and doesn't let them change it back to their settings. Uh, so some good stuff came out of that and we'll hopefully have some more results in the next couple of weeks as um, we continue from there. Sounds good. Michael? I just want to say one other thing um, about the Project Squeaky. Um, just I keep seeing more and more people learn about it and get excited about it and I was in a a presentation about that that user research project on Australis. Um, we showed Australis to to current Firefox users and got their impression. And one of the things that everybody was was very present was how many extra toolbars and crazy add-ons people had that they didn't know about or didn't. They were like, "How did I get those things?" And how much better it made Firefox because when we showed them Australis, we gave them. We cloned their profile, but it didn't bring over their add-ons. Um, so I, I've heard more and more people go, can we be even more aggressive? What else can we do? People are like, they're, they're go this is just, we got to be, maybe we can just be, you know, extra. We should just reset everybody <laughs> one time or something, whether they want it or not, or, you know, yeah. So it's a very cool project. Okay, that that sounds good. I, I think that maybe, uh, yeah, Tyler and Matt, M Michael, I'm sure that you can give your uh, feedback to Tyler and Matt all the time, but I, I think it sounds very good. It's also good to um, to know that, that all the, the effort that goes on in the forums, people trying to help other users uh, actually result in this initiative uh, of trying to, uh, you know, go before it actually happens and, and provide other options. So that's really cool. Exactly. And just to tap onto that, if anyone does see like add and don't revert them when they're uninstalled, stuff like that, please feel free to send those to me and we can reach out to those add ons and we can take steps to resolve those. Right. So those, or they just get, you know, keep getting fixed. So, um, well, there's our block list where we have all the add-ons we blocked in the past for violating our policies. Um, and then there's a bunch that, that used to break like Babylon that we've worked with them to get them to fix um, their software so it works properly now. Um, so there's kind of two lists. Right, but there's no real public list unless you look in the Bugzilla bug for the block list. Yeah, exactly. You have to you have to read through the bug. Or um, here, I will put another page in IRC. And this has all actually blocked bugs. I'll put it in there, Roland, and you can see it. Great, thank you. Okay, that sounds good. Um, thanks a lot, Matt and Tyler, uh, for attending there and for you know advocating users' rights there. Um, and I think that you'll probably keep us posted. So uh, on that note, let's move to Firefox Desktop. That says no major issues or updates today. I think that's a, that's good news, huh? 
I think it's um, Matt. I'm not, I'm not sure if Matt's there. Yeah, I mean, the only uh, thing that we uh, really still have going on is we're uh, running some studies right now to understand the mixed content blocking, but um, that's in beta. So for release, I mean, everything is really, really stable right now, which is, you know, always a good place to be. Okay, that, that's very good. Like, it's very nice when you don't have anything, so... <laughs> Very cool. Thanks. Uh, now we move to Firefox for Android. Roland, tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, just like desktop Firefox 22, Android um, seems to be super awesome, right, Tyler? Um, and uh, we have, um, I don't have this in the Etherpad, but we have a uh, Firefox 24 research, right, starting this week, Michael? So, um, Please help us with that, and uh, I'll put a link in here to the research thread if there is one or. There's not one yet. Some... I'll uh, I'll start it. Um, I don't know okay. if I get to start it today, but this week for yeah. sure. Anyhow, I, I have a list. There's the roadmap which has the list, and we welcome all uh, new timers, old timers, everybody in between, employees, uh, to help us research, um, which is some of the hardest things to do. All right. And yet we have a help article day, so we could even do research on the help article day, as well as easy edits, like the one I pointed out in the Etherpad. Thanks. OK, that sounds very good. Um, yeah, and Roland, you're going to leave us for a little while. You also put that on your Firefox oh, yeah, for Android yeah, yeah. update. <laughs> just in case people are wondering. But Tyler okay. will be covering me just to a limited, to a certain degree, well, to his awesome degree. so. We should be good. That's awesome to go. I'm sure it's pretty good already. Okay, but I'm sure we're going to miss you, um, Roland. Just be aware of that. Um, anyone, any questions for Firefox for Android? No. Well, let's move to Firefox OS. Michelle, you want to take this? Oh, I think Hermina put this update in. Okay, then Hermina, let's. Uh, I, I wasn't seeing you. Hermina, please let us know how is it going with, in Firefox OS land. Hey, so just uh, yeah, just a couple of updates from the past. Uh, I wanted to focus a bit on beta releases because we started receiving feedback from both screens. Um, Hermina, sorry, can you can you make it a little louder? Sorry, it's it's yeah. hard to hear. Sorry. Can you hear me better now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, of course. So um, I was saying that uh, this week I focused on uh, on the feedback we've uh, we've received because we started receiving feedback from both Spain and Poland, which is uh, very good. So um, I mentioned here that uh, we are lucky to have great users because they understand we are in other stages and they uh, like the overall feedback was positive and supportive. And uh, among the positive feedback was that the system is very intuitive; it's easy to use. The phones are at an affordable price. We got it a couple of times, uh, this, uh, this mention. Uh, we got several how-to questions, and I also had um, a chat, a thing with Telefonica, and they mentioned this as well. They mentioned that they, uh, they, didn't, get to, uh, they didn't get negative feedback uh, at all. They just got uh, how-to questions related to how to set up my email, how to connect to the internet. Um, they, um, they also got um, questions on which is pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, the areas of development, I call them, uh, users were asking about uh, about apps, more apps in the marketplace. Um, there were some mentions on um, phone being slow at times, and as well that they don't have notifications for email or for calendar. So these are um, still things to, to, to be improved. Um, as far as I know, we don't have any partner escalation so far, but maybe Patrick can and can help me with this. Last week on Friday. Telefonic has been, they just hooked uh, the escalation channel into uh, their support tool that they have. So they've sent off a couple test messages, but other than the testing, there's been no escalation so far. OK, so that's, uh, that's all from me. If, uh, if Michelle has something to add. Nope, that's it. Things are looking good. Yeah. Um, thanks, by the way, Hermina. I think it's very it's very interesting to hear like all, all this type of feedback uh, on Firefox OS because uh, although it's you know it's it 
right now we don't have a lot of uh, users right, uh, because it's just starting. Um, but it's good to hear that they're actually very understanding uh, that we're like in the first steps and that we're you know, slowly getting more feedback. So it's, you know, this project that we were planning for a long time it's finally has some, you know, some more meat on the bone. So I think that that's very interesting. So if you have any more uh, updates, just keep them coming. I think that everyone at Sumo uh, really appreciates those. So thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, and that is the Firefox OS. Now we go back to Roland and Thunderbird. Uh, same broken record as last week. <laughs> Firefox 24 is our next general release. It is in Aurora now and will be in beta, of course, in the fullness of time and as per our normal fun Thunderbird schedule. Please test it and there's instructions there from our test day in June. Thank you. Okay, well, there you go. So if you want to help Roland test um, Thunderbird, there you go. There's the do instructions it. to it. Yeah, just just do it. Just help Roland. <laughs> no, let's move to the metrics part. Um, I see Andrew. Andrew, I, I see Andrew, unfortunately, didn't join the call, but he, um, um, he uh, wrote a little question. Thanks uh, a lot, Andrew. Here, 56, a drop was made on helpful votes. Um, so he's asking if that could be some spam. Has anyone had the time to take a look at that? Kadir, maybe? Yeah, you see, the 14th, right. There is a drop in the forum. So this, is, this has been an issue before. Essentially, the forums get very few votes. So whenever we, we have an abundance of votes, or even, even a small increase in votes, um, that, that changes the, uh, the graph quite a bit. Uh, uh -huh. So far, every time I looked into the uh, helpful votes, yes, it was spam uh, each and every time. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, there is not that much that we can do about it at this point um, because they seem to, uh, we, we do have simple uh, spam protection in there, but it looks like they're uh, circumventing that. Right. Uh, Ricky, okay. do you have more about that? Uh, about what? About the spam, spam protection and, and how they are circumventing that. I, I know that we talked about it, but I don't quite remember anymore the outcome. I uh, think they, we are doing IP-based uh, spam protection, right? And they were using different IPs, right? Uh, yeah, if you're anonymous, it's by IP address. So it actually shouldn't be possible if you're using the same IP, it shouldn't be possible to spam anymore, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's always a way around things, right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, so it seems to be that that we, okay, we have a, this, 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 this problem with the spam. Uh, maybe we should keep this, keep an eye on this. So thanks a lot, Andrew, for bringing this up. Maybe we should keep an eye on this. And if this happens uh, too often, uh, we will have to do a little bit more uh, research on the spam and what is going on. Um, right now, it seems to be back to normal, right, Kadir? Uh, I was just looking at the KPI, and it seems to be that things are back to normal, right? Yeah, as far as we can tell, that's, that's actually the baseline. Um, so any strong deviations from that in the past? were usually due to spam, and it looks right. like it's back again. Okay, perfect. Um, so um, I would say that uh, it seems to be like a known issue. We have to keep an eye on it. Um, Andrew, thanks for reporting it. If you see it again, then maybe we should start thinking a little bit more about how we're filtering spam and how we can you know, close the door for those, uh, you know, those spammers. Um, anyway, I see uh, next. Uh, would be the knowledge base research for Firefox 24. Michael, do you want to get this one? That's it. We're going to start researching Firefox 24 this week. Um, I'll start. Okay, a, I'll did... start a thread in the in the uh, articles forum about that uh, later this week. Okay. You need any help? How how can contributors help you? Yes. Well, when I post the thread, I'll I'll link to all the documentation about researching, um, which mm -hmm. has videos and links that explain what to do. 
Okay, cool. So right. pretty much if you're interested in helping a little bit more, Michael will give you all you need to get started with research. Just, you know, contact him or me. And uh, if you want to get started, just, just go and into I, it. I'd like to second that. Uh, Michael's documentation is very helpful. Uh, Rosanna and Michael are very helpful. I'm very helpful. <laughs> Um, and the roadmap for mobile is actually accurate. This has historically not been true for Android, at least. It's the wiki page that I linked to, so that could be helpful as well for the people doing research. So I'll post okay. a sticky thread in the in the knowledge base articles form. I just put a link to the knowledge base articles. Great. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you, Michael. Looking forward to your documentation and the post that you're going to do. And for everyone, you know, watching this, if you feel like you're doing some research. Uh, uh, just, uh, you know, get involved. Uh, we're very happy to have you there. Um, great. So I'm going to jump to the localization. Uh, we had a little doodle we posted. I posted on the LTN forums and on the locality list. Um, the idea is to start getting localizers together for, you know, IRC meetings. Um, let's see how it works out because if we have a global community and it's very hard to get everyone at the same time. So we're just starting with a meeting today. Um, you know, we had two weeks and many, many times, and today, right after this call, uh, is the time that we asked for the most. Um, so we're going to pound Sumo Meet. We're just going to meet there. Um, in general, we're going to try to gather some feedback about the localization process. Um, I think it's interesting that localizers get a chance to talk to each other, uh, you know, maybe bounce off some ideas. And specifically, we're going to try to talk um, about the the process for the for Firefox OS because it was a whole new product and so many articles got created. Um, so we wanted to do a little uh, postmortem, uh, right, Michelle, to understand a little bit how this uh, how how localizers, um, you know, what they liked about the prog uh, the process, um, what they think about the style of the articles, if there's a big change or or you know like how this all fits uh, within Sumo, so that we can have a little postmortem and get a little feedback and um, you know. For the next iteration, just you know, have in mind what our localizers want and need. So please, uh, if you have the time, um, we're gonna start. Uh, Michael and I were going through the GTM and UTC. It's actually UTC at 5 p.m. UTC, uh, which is in 34 minutes. That's when we're getting started. Pound sumo meet so that we don't crowd uh, pound sumo. Uh, so everyone who has the time and who feels like it, just join us there for a little uh, conversation with localizers. Um, to you there, and this is just going to be the first one. We're going to try to uh, see how this, you know, if people have the time, when when it makes sense, and and then we'll try to m make more of this happen, just to get people um, together and on board. Um, maybe on a on a monthly basis, or maybe on a quarterly basis, we're going to see what the needs are. But uh, you're all welcome to come today. Don't miss it. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions about that, we can jump to the support forum, Madalena. Hey. So just a quick update on the last two day that we had on Thursday. Uh, we had the 94% um, questions which were which were answered within 24 hours, which is great. So thanks, guys. Unfortunately, I, I told Tyler that drinks would be on me if we reach 100%. We didn't. So I keep my promise. We will have all the drinks will be on me the moment we reach 100%. So let's try harder. Uh, Madalena, yes. sorry to interrupt, but I was monitoring the, the thing, and it was at 100% almost the whole day. Uh, I, I tried to answer it. And every time I was going there, it was 100%, 100%, 100%, 100 Yeah, well, it, it's probably what happens is that there are a few questions which are posted when everybody goes to sleep. And then they're not answered within 24 hours. So that this is usually what happens because also when I was monitoring, everything was 100%. There are a lot of people saying there's no more questions to, to answer. Um, so, yeah, we need to figure out how to to deal with those questions which come when where should we go to bed it's also a matter of time zone so maybe we can find some people who are in a different time zone and they're awake then <laughs> that might be an option so wait, when is the end of the day madalina is it utc it's, no it's calculated uh pst time so oh, see that's the problem okay 
plus, uh, remember that it's uh, the way it's calculated is basically 24 hours from the moment the question was posted and then it can go to over to the next day so it's it's like that it's not like let's say from 8 a.m to 24 to sorry 12 uh, 12 a.m pacific is basically if something was posted on 11 30 <laughs> then it goes next to uh, the following day so it's a bit tricky um but i mean we're we're getting close so i'm not that way about it we just need to figure out it i bet i bet there are like two or three questions who who caused that um this is what normally happens um so yeah but the good news is that we're we had 30 percent sulfate so we're growing slowly but surely there um which is what we want to concentrate on this quarter um so yeah i i think we're making uh, progress nonetheless so great job, any, uh, everybody, and thanks so much for participating. And yeah, let's answer some more more questions today, tomorrow, and every day. Oh, that's great. That's great. I think yeah, I think that uh, it's it's too bad that maybe at the end a couple of questions just uh, uh, you know pull it down. But yeah, if we have to see it, if the whole day it's a hundred percent, that's just uh, amazing. Um, so yeah, on that note, and and maybe you know regarding that contributors of the week, I see we have no nominations here. So everyone, just you know, just scratch your heads and tell me who you want to nominate this week, contributor of the week. Just so think I'm hard. nominating Scooby because he has been finding so many bugs and helpful bugs uh, together with Michael, actually. But I'm not sure. Can I also nominate Michael? No, <laughs> then it's Scooby. Both Again. of them actually filed really helpful bugs uh, over the last week, so that's great. Um, okay. And maybe that's also motivation for other people to file bugs if you want to see changes. Right. Or, or okay. So. Tell me in other ways. <laughs> Scooby, thanks. Thanks a lot for doing that. Um, and and you are nominating. You are nominated for the contributor of the week. Who else? I see Ralph. I see. I think Ralph, you're you're writing it right now. Um, Ralph? Maybe you're muted. Um, yeah, Ralph, you're muted. can't type and talk at the same time, like me. <laughs> it's a multitasking problem. Uh, okay. Uh, Marlena, maybe you can go on and tell us about Andrea. Yes, I just wanted to talk a bit about Andrea. Andrea um, um, is a um, contributor from Romania uh, who's been super active on um, Army of Awesome. Uh, in the last, not just the last week, but the last mm, months, um, and she's been staying on top, uh, on top all the time. So it's a great work from her. Uh, she also helped me a lot with doing some stuff for Army of Awesome for um, updating some canned responses and just bringing ideas. So thanks so much, Andrea. You're great, uh, and this is a nomination for you. Fantastic. Well, Andrea, more to me, Andrea, more to me. Romanian. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're, you're colonizing Sumo. We're going to have a huge uh, Romanian community. That's good. Maybe we should do a, a work week in Romania. Yes, um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, well, anyway, uh, that, that's great. And I wanted to point out that we usually talk a lot about forums and L10N and, and, and the KB. And, and, you know, Army of Possum seems to be like this little thing. And, you know, it's so easy to contribute, but it's, it's actually very important. And it's a great way to get people involved. So thank you everyone who's like on Army of Awesome and for everyone else don't forget to tell all your friends and uh, fellow contributors how uh, you know how fun it is to just go and reply to some tweets so thanks thanks a lot and I'm looking at this uh, Zilmar oh, so it seems to be that Ralph's microphone's not working so it's it seems to be that Zilmar or you know just gonna mispronounce it the new Brazilian contributor from Fizzle uh, he jumped and he edited a bunch of new articles so thanks a lot we love that one people just get started and get their hands dirty so thanks a lot uh, and I think that's a very good cut for this week so we have our three contributors of the week Scooby, Zilmar and Andrea thanks a lot thanks for having us so much at Sumo uh, you're making a super huge difference here um, for anyone else watching the, the the video you know just if you if you cannot make it to this call you can always write down the names of the other contributors that you know are doing an awesome job 
uh, and that will help us recognize uh, the rising stars of Sumo, and not only the rising stars, but the people like Scooby who have been contributing for years, and their contributions are like extremely, extremely important and helpful. So thanks a lot, everyone, for that. <coughs> and on that note, we have the unicorn, the show and tell. Um, I don't know if someone's uh, you know ready for that. Matt has a smile on his face that means that he has something. I don't have anything to share. Ah. <laughs> yeah. One of these days, maybe I'll show you uh, my my tech house. I can have to talk to you. You can, you can show us your cap. What's on that cap there? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Some pirate cap. What do you think? It's an anti-hero. Yeah. Matt's a pirate anti-hero from the future. I knew it. Okay. So we had a Matt's cap today. Anyone just you know, has some random thing to just show us. <laughs> oh, and also Michael, Matt. Michael, look oh, at Michael. Michael something. has something. Oh, he's yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right. Always best. rely on Michael. Let me see if this works. Ooh, what's that? No, oh, Matt, wait, you also have. Thing. Thing. <laughs> Brad's got them. Frosty, Frosty the snowman. Mug. <laughs> just okay, Ron, now you, ha now you get to sing the song. Frosty the snowman. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Uh, what was that guy's name? Bert Eves or whatever? The, the, the deep bro eyes. Bro eyes, Bert Eves. You know, it's close. <laughs> I just saw Michael running, so I think Michael has something cool. Or I could sing, you know, the Quebec song. Bonhomme, bonhomme, c'est toujours bonhomme, bonhomme. That's the bonhomme is the official snowman of the Quebec carnival. <laughs> oh wow. This is just getting I'm learning better. so keep much. On, in on, it's incredible. Just, yeah, this is really good. Uh, okay, Michael's back. All right, I'll you do run, this. Michael. I'll do this real quick. So I'm sure there's so, something really cool you want to show us. So when I was a kid, I loved the Cosmos series that was on PBS. This is this is the book. The cover's gone, but this is the book that I got when I was like 12 or whatever when that came out. I've got the, of course, I have it all on DVD. When I was a kid, we had a VCR. It was the giant pop-up top VCR with no timer. So I recorded it every week for 13 weeks, but you had to be there to put the tape in and hit record at the right time so I could have a full set of it on VHS. Oh, and adjust the antenna so that the reception came in good because there was no cable TV. Anyway. But that's a link in there for the trailer for the new version that's coming out next year. Of course, not with what? Carl Sagan and not without the Vangelis music. It's got some crap music oh. or whatever. But it's Neil oh. Tyson DeGrasse doing the as the host. It looks really cool. Oh, that's what they're talking about with Neil Tyson. Yeah, really, yeah. So it's Cosmos rebooted. Yeah. Well, updated. They got to update the science. We learned a lot more about the universe in the last 30 five years or whatever no okay that's pretty cool that's <laughs> yeah. pretty cool oh yeah that's that's very cool go neil tyson degrasse go that's that guy right yeah doogie hauser is that doogie hauser no 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 he's the oh, it's not? <laughs> totally different guy like so different <laughs> <laughs> that's neil patrick harris very close <laughs> three names they have like, like three names but yeah Okay, Different okay, Neil. Just... <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I can't handle names, really. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if they could be any more different. Like, <laughs> probably not. That's anyway. A classic. Oh, that was a good one. Right, I'm going to look at that. Michael, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So this is type of stuff. And and by the way, if someone who cannot attend this call from the community wants to share something with us, um, something you really like, you're really passionate about, like or something as cool as you know this thing, just let us know. We 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 always want to share this type of things. And thanks, Michael. That that's really actually very very cool. Um, so yeah, I I, I think that's uh, for today. Uh, regarding decision and action items for next week, there wasn't much today. Um, Kadir, do you think that you sh we should keep an eye on the spam issue? Um... Well, we did it the last time, but it, essentially it looks like there is no... E so we did already the easy one uh, for spam filtering. It looks like if we want to do more, it's going to get really complicated. Um, 
So unless this is a huge issue for us, it might be better to just uh, live with it. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so if anyone sees anything, just let us know. Maybe at, at some point uh, we will have to do something about it. But right now, as per now, we're just going to live with that. With, with that. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's pretty much what we had for today. Uh, very very glad to see you and you know as usual everyone's very invited to come here and um happy monday everyone have a great week and see you next week at the same time in the same channel <laughs> bye thanks Rosanna. bye bye, bye. bye.